Hello, this is Christine, the food specialist at A Naturally Balanced Dog, and welcome to the Let's Talk Dog Show. And today we're going to be talking about dogs who are hyperactive and what are some changes that you can make to help reduce these problematic behaviors. And the good news is you have the ability to resolve this. So looking at some of the reasons why dogs have hyperactivity, um, can be based on lack of discipline, uh, could be lack of structure in the house, it could be lack of training, um, maybe not enough exercise, uh, not enough mental stimulation, and or um, certainly there can be an underlying issue, and that issue being food. Food has a massive effect on our dogs. However, we rarely consider how food impacts our dog's behavior. And so what I wanna do is kind of set the stage a little bit here and uh, share with you, um, Dr. Jean Dodds has a canine nutrigenomic book, which um, you can see I use quite a bit as a reference. Um, I loved her book. Um, but I just kind of wanted to read a little part in here to help kind of set the stage for our uh, talk today. So it talks about high glycemic carbs uh, sabotage brain health. And it goes on with, you know that um, high carbs contribute to numerous chronic illnesses in dogs, but did you realize that they can also have a negative effect on behavior? Have you ever experienced a child who has become wildly hyperactive shortly after consuming sugary food or a drink and then crashes into a state of sluggishness a couple hours later? We agree with Colleen Page, who in the Good Behavior book for dogs states that high carbohydrate foods such as corn um, and wheat can create similar mood swings in dogs as they do people. After ingesting these foods, dogs experience a high sugar, which creates hyperactivity and lack of focus, that the owner often mistakes this as ill-mannered and uncooperative behavior, but which is actually uh, food-related. The high is followed by a low, which Paige says uh, can cause dogs to become sleepy, lethargic, moody, and irritable. And so the reason I wanted to share that passage was coming from um, some dog experts um, that uh, food can actually affect um, our dog's behavior. And what we see often in ourselves can also be seen in our animals. And so food, as I mentioned, has this massive effect on and it impacts your dog's behavior. Um, with that being said, <clears throat> We know that uh, dogs can struggle uh, with mental clarity uh, during hyperactivity. I guess some of the behaviors that are associated with it is they struggle with mental clarity, lack of focus. Um, they have an inability to retain information. Um, they, have, they might be very fidgety. They can become obviously hyperactive. And all of this can lead into a dog that is pacing, panting, this can develop actually into stress and anxiety if your dog's eating, uh, if your dog is eating a poor diet. And so what we want to do is we want to look at the percentage of carbs um, that your dog is eating. And so um, it's very simple to figure this out. What you want to do is look at your bag dog food. And if your dog is uh, and look at the guaranteed analysis. So in the guaranteed analysis, it gives us two of the three macronutrients, your macronutrients being protein, fat, carbohydrates. And so they don't put the carb on there because they don't want you to know, but we're smart. We can figure it out. If the, if, uh, the protein, fat, and carbohydrate equal 100%, then what we wanna do is add the fat and the protein whatever those numbers, add those together and subtract that from 100 and that will give you approximately what your carbohydrates are in that particular dog food. And so um, in addition uh, to the high carbs, 
uh, in, in kibbles, we also have a lot of food additives and dyes in them. And so um, we'll talk about that because there's certainly um, a plethora of information on the internet about food additives and dyes and how that um, affects people as well as our animals. So for example, I Google searched um, red dye 40 um, because I see a lot of that in dog treats um, and I do see it in some of the dog uh, in some of the dog foods. And so the uh, the first thing that popped up was uh, in the in the first spot was Dr. Daniel Edmond, who is a best-selling author of books pertaining to the brain. And so I was on his website and I was reading his blog and on his blog, there was a, um, a, an article that was called Brain Health and Red Dye 40. And so in it states that both adults and children have reported to have upset stomachs, migraines, jitteriness, nervousness, and the inability to concentrate after they consume Red Dye 40. And then it continues to go on in regards to a study, or excuse me, a report that was written by the Center for Science in Public Interest slash Ingredients of Concern. And in the report, it states that artificial food dyes pose a rainbow of risk, meaning anything between, can uh, between allergies and cancer. Um, he then goes on in the article and he talks about the connection between red dye 40 and ADD and ADHD. And so basically what we're trying to do here is put a picture together so that you understand what it is that you're currently doing and what it is that we need to change. And so by associating um, with some of the other professionals out there, hopefully we're making that connection for you. And so. The next site under Dr. Edmonds was a site called Clean Living, and they had a post that talked about food dyes that caused behavioral problems in children that were commonly associated with aggressive impulsive behavior. And so based on some of these experts, again, we know that dogs are experiencing similar reactions. And so we can make these connections between our own dog's behavior, such as hyperactivity, and the foods that they're eating. So where do we start? So what we wanna do is we wanna start with the ingredients. And so what we wanna avoid in our foods, both in treats and in your dog's food, is anything that has coating, flavoring, um, additives, including sugars, uh, rendered animal uh, byproducts, uh, chemical and artificial preservatives, and high carbs. And so let's go ahead and start with evaluating treats. And so what I did is I went to the store, I went to a doggy boutique and I selected some treats and then I went to Walmart. But before we start, um, I just wanna do a quick disclaimer and say that I am not recommending any of the products. I have no affiliation. Uh, these companies don't support me in any way. I'm not reviewing their product per se. I'm simply reviewing um, that product based on our topic of discussion. And so um, some of the treats that I found in the doggy boutique was um, that I thought was kind of cool was this cocoa therapy coconut chips. Ooh. Okay, and so this had um, just simply dehydrated coconut meat product in itself was $12.99. And then um, I selected a uh, product here, which is um, just simply uh, beef jerky and or um, dehydrated beef heart. And so we kind of want to stay, uh, stay with um, single ingredients because I feel that that is the safest for these type of dogs. So again, um, this would be a, a great product. It's just simply meat-based. There's nothing else added to it. Uh, there's no added sugars or anything of that sort. Um, that uh, price on that was uh, 15 bucks. And then this one is a treat that I see often from dogs, which is just simply 
dehydrated um, sweet potatoes. However, the problem with those dehydrated sweet potatoes is again, we're high in starch. High in starch is the equivalent to um, offers, uh, uh, increases that carb load. So again, if we're trying to reduce carbohydrates and sugars, then I, reading the label is gonna be really important for us to do. So that was another one um, that I found in the boutique. And then the fourth one was this Blue Bliss, which is um, organic, it's gluten-free, it's a non-GMO, it's vegan, there's no preservatives. And again, as I mentioned, it's organic. So it sounds like a wonderful treat that we can give our dogs. However, when we look at our, rest, our, our ingredients, the first ingredient is organic oats. And then the second one is going to be um, organic brown rice syrup. And then the third one is organic dates. So obviously brown rice syrup and uh, dates are very sugary. And so although it has a lot of cool um, benefits being organic and gluten-free and non-GMO, and I love all that stuff, but it is not something that we would want to utilize for a dog that has hyperactivity. So when we're giving high carbs and sugar and it increases that energy and it creates that crazy behavior, it is definitely something that we'll want to stay away from. And so then I went to Walmart. And this is a treat that I often see. Um, and I'm not going to read all of the ingredients, more or less just the ingredients that I found to be um, concerning. And so the first one being that it is a meat byproduct. And so it's not even a real meat. So meat byproduct is um, an unnamed source of food. It doesn't even tell you if it's beef or chicken or we don't know what that means. Then the next one is, um, it's got sugar in it. Um, it has a preservative. Uh, it has a caramel color added to it. It has natural color and it has BHA. And so BHA is a carcinogen that produces cancer, particularly for dogs, it would be stomach cancer and can um, actually affect the thyroid. So anything with BHA, I would steer away. But even if it didn't have the BHA, not a, do uh, not a treat that we would want to give um, our dogs um, from uh, a hyper standpoint, a hyperactivity standpoint. The other one is uh, Benefil. I think a lot of people buy Purina products. So I wanted to kind of grab up one of their treats. Um, by the way, the pepperoni, I think that was like $2.89. Um, this was probably around $2.89 as well. Um, the ingredients here was uh, basically wheat flour, um, ground uh, yellow corn. Uh, it's got sugar. It's got corn gluten meal. It's got a chicken byproduct in it. Um, it does have coloring in it. It has added coloring, natural artificial flavors. It has... Uh, preservatives and the food colorings are yellow six, red 40, yellow five, blue one. So again, um, not a treat that we would be looking at. So of these, basically what we're going to be looking for is something more similar to that of the small batch, which is just a single ingredient of um, a chicken uh, or a beef based or whatever protein or whatever. Um, and what we'll do is in another uh, live feature is we'll actually talk about how you can take and get these quality uh, foods like you're paying in these boutiques for $15, $16 a bag down to the price of the unhealthy foods that we don't want to feed at a $2.89 mark. And so there is a way to do that and we can kind of discuss that um, as well. So um, basically, let's go ahead and take the next step together. So in the same way we evaluate treats, we're gonna evaluate your dog's food. However, for kibble feeders, there is no brown pellet food that is low in carb. Even if it is a grain-free, 
then it's still going to have starchy ingredients like sweet potatoes, peas, tapioca, um, which are all high starch and in the same sense, they are high in carbohydrates. And so one of the things I wanna share is this is a newer book, Dr. Jean Dodd's book has been out for a while. Um, this is called The Forever Dog, which was written by um, Dr. Karen Becker and uh, Rodney Habib. And uh, they have in here uh, a couple little spots that I want to just share with you really quickly. Contra uh, contrary to controversial wisdom, dogs don't have a carbohydrate requirement. And the average bag of grain dog food um, is often more than 50% carbs, largely from insulin raising corn and potatoes. So now we can see that our dog food is very high in carbohydrates. She goes on to talk about replacing as little as 10% of your dog's daily processed food, which is the kibble, with fresh food can create positive changes in your dog's body. So it's not a nothing, it's not an all or nothing mentality when it comes to improving your dog's health, which I totally agree with. And in my case, usually when I'm working with um, uh, people who have uh, dogs that are uh, having uh, behavioral issues and we're evaluating food, um, we go from that 10% actually to a 20% um, uh, fresh food in the bowl. So what we're doing is, as we're taking this next step, is I'm going to help you to make a better selection as to choosing what type of foods you uh, that are going to help reduce the hyperactivity. So what kind of foods can we put in your dog's bowl? So in my 20 years of experience in working with dogs, when I'm assessing dog's behavior, there's two things that um, I'm kind of thinking about. One is it from a training aspect and the other is from a food aspect. But for today, we're actually talking about food. And so when it comes to the food, there's two categories. Um, and so one of those is what I'm trying to do is gather some additional information to give me some insight as to what is happening. So if I see a dog that is having digestive issues or they're scratching and itching, or chewing on themselves, or licking, maybe they have ear infection. Um, so if so, um, then chances are we're dealing with a dog that has allergy issues. And if you've ever had a dog that has had allergies, or if you've had allergies yourself, then you know that definitely can affect how you feel and how you behave. And so by the way, if you missed last week's discussion, we talked about chronic ear issues. And so we went over some uh, do-it-yourself remedies uh, that will help alleviate those issues. And so you can find that on YouTube. Um, and while you're there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And so um, I just wanted to share with you, uh, yeah, we were talking about the ear issues that that might be very uh, beneficial for you uh, if you have a dog that is experiencing that. So if we're dealing with allergy issues, then what we're going to do is take a food and environment sensitivity test, which you can find on the uh, naturallybalancedog.com uh, website. And so it's a very affordable test. It gives you a lot of information about your dog's health and overall well-being. It only takes 10 days for you to get your report. It goes over what foods your dogs might be sensitive to, along with uh, additives, um, and dyes and preservatives. It also goes over environmental. Uh, it talks about heavy metals. And so it really kind of gives you quite a bit of information in regards to your dog. So I find that to be a very beneficial um, test. So um, what we do is, again, if we're experiencing dogs that have hyperactivity due to allergies, then what we wanna do is just switch the food and create a meal plan based on the results of that test. And so, however, if I'm, uh, if I'm not seeing any of those indicators, then I know we're probably just dealing with a dog that is eating the wrong food. And so then we're going to kind of categorize, kind of goes under another categories, which is about thermal food energetics. 
And so what is thermal food energetics? That's probably what you're asking, right? It's not about the temperature of the food. It doesn't mean that the food is hot or cold, but rather what it's talking about is the food and its effect on the body. So for example, let's say you take a bite into a jalapeno pepper and you know that that is really hot and, and sometimes it just completely um, raises the heat in your body. Maybe your face will get red. Maybe you'll um, you know, have some sweat. You know, a lot of people will try to drink water or something to try and cool that down. And so that is what thermal food energetics is. It's about how food acts in the body and what is it that it creates. So on the flip side, <clears throat> consider it being like um, a hot summer day um, and uh, you're really warm and you come in the house and you open the refrigerator and you take a a slice of cold watermelon and you bite into that. It's very refreshing, it's very cooling, it helps to lower the body's temperature. And so that's what food energetics is about. It's based on traditional Chinese medicine, um, what they would consider yin and yang foods. And so dogs who are hyperactive are very hot, dogs. And so these are dogs where their energy level is up, they're very active, they're very hot. And so what we're looking to do is find foods that help to balance that out and utilize cooling foods to um, reduce that energy. So a dog that exhibits hyperactivity is what we would consider a classic yang energy, which is very, again, it's very hot, it's very high um, in heat. And so these dogs usually prefer to um, lay on tile floors. Um, they prefer cool weather as opposed to warm weather. Um, they probably have excessive panting. Um, so what we wanna do is counterbalance um, with cooling foods. And so cooling proteins are like rabbit, duck, and white fish. However, if you are a kibble food feeder, or if you cook the food, then you're taking the cool temperature and changing it into warm. And so we want to keep the food fresh and we want to keep it raw. But if you're feeding a kibble, this is where we're talking about adding that 10 to 20% of fresh food into the bowl, which is going to make a huge impact on your dog's health and hopefully their behavior as well. So other foods that we can look at is um, neutral foods, which don't create heat, nor do they create a cooling effect, um, which is going to be like beef, um, eggs, mackerel, tuna. Um, so these are things that we're either adding as a fresh diet or adding into a kibble food um, for fresh food into the kibble or into the processed food. The vegetables that you could use that are cooling um, would be like broccoli, celery, spinach, Swiss chard, cucumbers, um, bok choy. And so these are uh, the vegetables you wanna lightly steam. And then um, I always put it through a food processor and then just simply mix it into uh, your dog's uh, food bowl. So the other thing is instead of using treats, um, that you buy in the store, you can utilize um, cooling fruits such as like apple, watermelon, kiwi, cucumbers, banana. Um, so those are some nice treats that you can be utilizing um, that have that cooling effect for your dogs. The proteins that you want to stay away from is chicken, goat, pheasant, lamb, trout, those are warming foods that create those heat. So you probably wanna go back and take a look at your dog's food and make sure that that is not um, in it. In addition, now we know that we wanna remove food additives, food coloring, lower the carb load, and we wanna begin adding yin cooling foods. Um, and so this is where we kind of begin with, uh, 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 creating that more healthful and helping to reduce that energy level from your dog. But for kibble food or, uh, feeders, if you're still after um, three weeks, you're not really noticing a difference, then I'm going to say that you probably have to make a bigger change and actually go to 
feeding 100% uh, fresh food diet for your dog. Um, and so you can add, um, you can also add um, calming herbs. We recommend super phyto foods. Um, the uh, name of the uh, phyto food is called OM, which we have on our website. And that helps dogs to manage that stress load and helps to restore some calmness. And so it has some great herbs um, that help with just reducing that stress load that might also be kind of creating some hyperactivity in, in your dog. So changing your dog's diet in conjunction with focused training exercise will definitely boost you into the right direction. And so um, I just wanna say thank you very much for joining me today. Um, I hope that you'll be able to utilize some of this information. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the yin and yang food, jump on over to our website under food facts, you'll find a couple of tabs. One, be called, uh, one is called the yin and yang dog, and that will actually talk to you about your dog's personality type and what foods you can match up with them. Um, and then there's uh, a tab called food and moods. And so again, if you're noticing emotional issues with your dog, such as aggression, grief, depression, and or physical things such as um, hyperactivity, lethargia, then this will help you to um, give you some indicators as to what foods you might be able to add to your dog's dish to help balance out those behaviors as well. And so um, it was uh, great giving you some information here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll come back with you uh, next week with another topic. And uh, if you are on uh, Facebook, give us a thumbs up. If you are on YouTube, on our channel, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining. Uh, please give us a little thumbs up on the video and subscribe to our channel so it helps us grow and share information with other people who, uh, like us, love dogs. So give those dogs a hug. Give them some lovings and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye now.